Hello, welcome to today's book review. Today we're going to be reviewing True For You But Not For Me, Overcoming Objections to the Christian Faith by Paul Kogan, published by Bethany House Publishers in 1998 and revised in 2009. I've had this book in my collection for quite a while and got around to reading it this year as part of a goal that I set for myself to read at least two books a month. Now, Paul Kogan has a Ph.D. from Marquette University and is currently Professor and Pledger Family Chair of Philosophy and Ethics at Palm Beach Atlantic University in Palm Beach, Florida. Now, the book deals with apologetics, or evidences, for the Christian faith. And that is something that is very necessary in this day and time for Christians to be studying, not just because there's less respect for biblical authority, but because you've got people in all quarters that are fighting against biblical authority. And this book will help you to have some sound, logical reasons for believing in the Christian faith. Now, why do we call it apologetics? Well, our English word apology and apologetics actually come from a Greek term. In 1 Peter chapter 3, and verse 15, Peter says, To sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense or an answer to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear. Now the word for defense or answer used here in 1 Peter 3.15 is a legal term that was used to describe a defense offered to charges filed against someone in a court of law. So a defendant would be brought into court and would be advised of the charges against him and then asked to give an apology or a defense to these charges that have been brought against him. So for us Christians, we need to be ready to give a defense or a reason for why we are Christians. And it shouldn't be something like, well, why do you believe fill in the blank? Well, I don't know. It's just what my dad taught me. Why do you believe the Bible is the word of God? Well, um, um, that's just, just what my church teaches. Why do you believe that baptism is immersion and necessary for the forgiveness of sin? I don't know. It's just what the preacher said on Sunday. We need to be ready to give answers. Now, this book isn't necessarily into doctrine, but it is into the philosophical reasons why we can reasonably conclude that Christianity is a, a reasonable faith. Books like True For You But Not For Me will deal with important questions that Christians face on a regular basis, from atheists as well as liberal Christians who are, in reality, a brand of skeptic. Now, while it is not possible, and this is key to remember, it is not possible to answer every single question that someone might have. I've been preaching for 20, almost 24 years. I've been a Christian for over 30 years. There's a lot of questions I have no idea how to answer. But just saying, I don't know doesn't mean you're stupid, doesn't mean you've lost the argument, just means you don't know. But books like True For You But Not For Me will help you to have an answer so that uh, if you're ever faced with some of these questions, you'll be able to give something resembling an intelligent answer. Now this book is broken into two parts. Part one is absolutely relative. And he, here's a list of the, uh, of the uh, titles and subjects that he goes through uh, on this book. And then part two is the absolutism of moral relativism. You see, people who claim to be moral relativists, that is, what's right and wrong uh, in a certain situation may not be right or wrong in another situation, if it's right for you may not be right for me, they are pretty absolute in that. And there's a little bit of a contradiction there. And he goes in and deals with a lot of this. Now, what are some of the strengths of this particular book? Well, it is short, concise arguments. Very good for the layman, uh, anybody with a good reading ability should be able to read this book and understand it and be able to apply it. It is also well documented. There are 19 pages of notes uh, at the end of various source notes at the end, which is very important. Uh, over the years, I've heard preachers and teachers make claims and they'll say uh, about uh, evolution or about some philosophical argument, pro or con for Christianity, and then you come to find out, well, no, that's not true. That's some urban legend. So it's always good to have uh, good source material. So if there's ever any question, you can go back and see uh, the source of it. He also has discussion questions, useful for small groups, uh, even for yourself to stimulate thinking. If you're preparing lessons or sermons, maybe on some of these uh, topics, it will help you to uh, prepare that way. 
And then it, each chapter has a summary of the major points that he covered, which is also good just for summation, maybe thought-provoking, maybe just a way of uh, giving a concise answer to someone. Now, weaknesses. One of my pet peeves about books like True For You But Not For Me is when they do not have any kind of an index. He has no index. So if you're wondering about a particular word he references or maybe a, an author that he references, you're going to have to start at page one and go all the way through to find it unless you make notes along the way and put them in the front cover as I uh, usually do on books like this. Uh, another particular weakness of the book is sometimes he gets really close to painting with too broad of a brush when discussing relativism. Not all atheists and skeptics are going to be relativists when it comes to these things, and unfortunately not all Christians are going to be moral absolutes, uh, particularly liberal Christians. And this one is not so much a weakness as much as it's just, it's just a caveat. As I said in the beginning, this book is written for the layman. If you have a neighbor, uh, atheist, who's a PhD in, in uh, paleontology or geology or something like that, he'll probably find the arguments in this book rather simplistic. So if you're dealing with someone like that, or a PhD in philosophy or something like that, or just a hardcore atheist, they might not find these answers in this book satisfactory, which is okay. Peter just said to have an answer. He never said everybody is going to accept every answer that you give. But if someone uh, is of that uh, level, uh, caliber of education and knowledge, you might need to dig a little deeper and get some books that are, and some answers that are put forth in a little bit deeper detail than what this book offers. But overall, it's a good book to use for the layman. It's a good book to use in Sunday school, small group, or just for your own personal study. So what do you think? Have you read the book? If so, feel free to leave a comment below. If you have some other questions, feel free to email me, 2timothy4.2.3 at gmail.com. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.